Now, I would like to give a brief idea about myself. My name is Tinu Thomas. I work as technical manager for UAE. Uh, I have around 11 years experience in construction industry, eight years of experience in fixings. I am uh, specialized in uh, design of chemical, mechanical, and nylon anchors, design of installation systems, manual design calculations, training. I do a lot of trainings for anchor installations, etc. I am a mechanical engineer by uh, background. And uh, I also take part in uh, Fisher training department and the ac activities. OK, now for the webinar to happen smoothly, uh, we prefer to have you uh, using the uh, link which was provided in Google Chrome, Firefox, o or Opera. Uh, this should be your preferred browser. Uh, preferred one, number one, is Google Chrome. But if you don't have Google Chrome, you can uh, still use Firefox or Opera, which is much more desired than Internet Explorer. OK, can you all see Fixperience in the screen? There's a software called Fixperience. OK, great. So Fixperience is a software which is completely developed by Fisher. And it's a, it's a group module which has around six softwares within. And uh, I would just explain you the basics about what the software is all about. There are six different modules. The first one is called CFIX. It is for fixings in concrete, where we would be more focused today. The second software is called RailFix, which is more, uh, mainly for design of handrails. Uh, it's uh, one of our uh, latest innovations, uh, RailFix, which is very popular in Europe and becoming more uh, common here also in Middle East. Uh, this helps you design of handrails. It automatically calculates the loads on your handrails. It recommends the anchors, considers concrete, and a lot more. And then Reba Fix is a software which is aimed for civil construction or structural design when you have concrete members being uh, constructed with some modifications like a slab extension, a column extension, or so on. Reba Fix is a very useful tool. And then you have Wood Fix, which is mainly for wooden cons uh, construction. Uh, if you are from Middle East, I uh, believe you would not be using much of wood fix because we have very less wooden buildings here, but still it's good to have. Install fix. Install fix is a software which is mainly for uh, installation systems, mainly for MEP uh, applications. If you have a suspended pipe, duct, cable tray, or such applications, you can use install fix which is a very useful tool it's a very user friendly uh, tool so you it's a structural software you can ca calculate your supports there and motor fix is a estimation tool basically motor fix le lets you calculate if in case you're going with a chemical anchor you can uh, estimate the uh, the volume of chemical which is required to complete your whole project this is very useful. It's very simple. I would also show you motor fix towards the end of the session. So, so far we have 52 participants. I hope everyone, the voice, the screen, uh, everything is audible. That's what I could understand from your chats. Uh, I would also give you the uh, link to download the software if uh, any one of you wants to try the software. I uh, send uh, the link and then you can try if in case you have any issues you can please contact me or contact Fisher and we would definitely get back to you now first things first after you install the software if you are a new user okay I will just send you the link right away this is where you would uh, find the software uh, link But I would recommend uh, if you would do the download later on because it might take some time because it's an offline version, so it needs to download uh, from the internet. Okay, now once you download the software, you can uh, you can have three icons on the left bottom corner of the screen in Fixperience. 
first you have to click on the registration tab where you have a notepad and a pen you click on that you would be prompted to enter a few details such as your name company name department phone number email street zip code country etc the the tabs where you have a star sign are obviously mandatory so you have to fill all the uh, form where it is marked as star and then click on ok you would receive an email within few seconds and this is a message you would see on your screen once you receive this email it will have a passcode activation key you just need to copy it from your email browser and paste it on the key logo so first you have to go to the registration tab where the notepad and the pen is shown once you receive your key click on the key and copy paste your activation key and then your software is good to go for lifetime it's a free software so uh, once you have registered it's a one time process and you can continue using it uh, as long as you wish if you don't register you still can use the software but it is limited for a period of 30 days so after 30 days you would still continue to use the software but you would not be allowed to generate a report from the software so this is where we always recommend when you install it immediately you can use the key and uh, then you uh, you, are, you don't have any stress on the use of the software so first we would go to see fix you double click on the icon you would see a screen like what i'm seeing now so the software is very easy it operates from left side to right side so we would go into each and every minute details the first thing is you have to click on the left most uh, top tab where you see a desktop icon you click on that you have few options like new project open project save project or save as and there you also have options so if you click on options you can select your preferred uh, units you can prefer uh, you can add your dimensions you can add your profile uh, you can also change location you can change layouts and so on there is lot of options available you can also change your language a uh, lot more options are available at this screen you can also change from millimeter to uh, centimeters or inches you can change the forces from kilonewtons to uh, uh, pounds or kits so all these are uh, possible on this particular tab now coming back to the software the first tab is called substrate so it's very important that we know where are we going to make this connection is it a concrete is it masonry and so on so here obviously you have two options the first one is concrete which is most of the cases uh, applicable in the market also we have an option called masonry so once we go with concrete you have to define what is the uh, compressive strength of the concrete so here you have all possible standards for uh, for defining the compressive strength from american standard to ba standard din standards euro code so you have british code lot many options so you can prefer any standard which you are comfortable with or you can also have a customized tab as you can see the customized tab lets you define the dimension of the concrete sample and then what is the grade of concrete what you observe from your test so this is also an additional option available the next option is you have to define what is the condition of your concrete the concrete is it in tensile zone or compressive zone thereby defining Uh, whether you have to use crack concrete or non crack concrete and then you have option for your reinforcement inside concrete you have no or standard reinforcement which is a default setting 
or you can consider that you have heavily reinforced concrete which is dense reinforced next you have edge reinforcement suppose you have an edge of concrete as you can see here i'm adding an edge so you have an edge of let's say 200 mm so you have an edge but you have some reinforcements like a straight reinforcement or stirrups which might be beneficial in preventing the edge from cracking then you can define to whatever condition you feel is applicable as per your site condition also if you have additional reinforcement to control splitting you can click on the tab uh, on the uh, on the option which is here and moving on you also have filters like you uh, you know what is a preferred drilling where you will be using at site to install the anchors is it a standard hammer drilling using a drill machine or you have a diamond drilling using a coring tool so you can select that not all anchors work with diamond drilling so this is an additional filter so you would see only anchors which are qualified for use in diamond drill holes further you have additional filters like standard you assume that your hole is dry wherein you have additional options like water saturated holes or standing water in a hole where you get to see only products which are approved for water saturated or standing water in the hole cases cleaning process a very important process a very important step in installation of anchors by default the software assumes that we are all engineers and we do all our installations in the way it is intended to so we assume that all cleaning process are maintained but if you have certain conditions where you don't follow any cleaning process then you can still go for no cleaning necessary and you would see few products available which are approved for no no cleaning at all so we have products which does not require any cleaning but you have to make a filter here so it is uh, the selection is made in an appropriate manner moving on you have uh, effect of temperature you have long term temperature and short term temperature long term temperature is the average lifetime service temperature of the concrete where your anchor is going to be installed considering the fact of daytime night time summer time winter time that's the average long term service temperature and you have short term temperature which is at for a short period of time uh, most uh, probably at the time you would be installing the anchor the concrete would be exposed to sunlight let's say and the temperature seems to be a little high and then once your application is complete probably it's a covered and atmosphere and your temperature might drop off that's why you have two temperatures and then you have another option which is relatively new to the uh, module uh, which is you have the possibility of had, having a virtual edge suppose you have two base plate installed next to each other then you have an inference of uh, two the anchor on the neighboring plates so where you can add virtual edge so at this point you have only one edge at x axis so you can uh, minus x so you can add a virtual edge at minus x so the software does not check for an edge failure but it checks for the effect of pry out and concrete cone failure when you have this option so far is it clear for everyone let me go through your chats yes seems to be uh, okay yes now let's go to base plate base plate is uh, very important because you need to know what is the base plate where you're going to fix obviously so the software lets you select base plate you can also define uh, you can also select a case without a base plate where you have just one anchor no base plate and you can apply loads in all possible axis or you can select a circular base plate in a circular shape you also have an elliptical option a triangular base plate a rectangular base plate or hexagon now there is something new here which is called polygon what is polygon 
polygon is basically a tool let's uh, select a rectangle base plate for example with some larger dimensions so it's easy for us to visualize so now you're fixing a 200 by 200 base plate so when you go to polygon polygon lets you model this base plate suppose you don't have an exact rectangular base plate so you can add corners here you can have additional corners and thereby you can model any random shape of base plate you would love to you also have an option here so that you can collect your coordinates from a drawing software like an AutoCAD and you can just manually enter the coordinate values the center of the plate would be the uh, origin and then you can enter manually all the coordinates you wish to have or corners you wish to have and then it would automatically define the same so you can see once you change here the drawing is also getting changed So as you can see, now we have a very unique shape, which is custom made for a very special application, let's say. You can also have the possibility of rotating your base plate. You can rotate your base plate in any uh, angle. Normally the rotation happens at 45 degrees, and then you can have it in any orientation, which you would love to. 2D plate editor is exactly the same as the uh, polygon option which we which we saw it's just one more tab you have and that's the same you can enter the base plate thickness here directly or you can you can enter it directly on the interface graphical interface which is whichever is convenient for you installation type installation type you have auto which is uh, by default the setting. You also have option pre-positioned installation or push through installation. Just to explain you what is the difference, pre-positioned installation means you would install the anchor before you bring your base plate to the concrete. Push through installation means you would keep your base plate, drill the hole through the base plate and then bring the anchor and connect the base plate directly through the base plate this is pushed through and pre-positioned now you get to see a ratio edge distance slash hole diameter this is uh, very important this is the ratio of edge distance from the anchor till the edge of the plate divided by the hole diameter in your plate for a slotted hole the standard is 1.5 but if you have a circular hole you have the flexibility to reduce it to 1.2. This lets you optimize your dimension of your plate. Sometimes when you have your base plate, which might not be accepted by the software, because by default, it is assuming that all, all the holes are slotted. So the ratio is by default at 1.5. Now, base plate, the next option is base plate installed on the base material. By default, the software assumes that any base plate is installed directly on concrete. But more often, this is not the case. You can have a layer of grout between the base plate and the concrete, as you can see in the second picture. Or you can have a standoff. There is a gap between your base plate and the concrete. There is a standoff. You have two uh, options. This is for chemical anchors. And this is for mechanical anchors where you need to clamp the bolt directly to the concrete and then you have a standoff. You can uh, select the option which is relevant for your case. Let's say we have a layer of grout. You can have, uh, if you have a grout, you can define the compressive strength, which does not make much influence in the design. You can define your layer thickness. For example, I have 20 mm grout between my plate and concrete. Degree of restraint, which is also very important. So the advantage of the software is if, you, if you're not sure in what is 
this option when you just move your uh, cursor to that screen you would see a total explanation of what this option is meant for for example this degree of restraint means the connection between your plate and your concrete is uh, how is it is it a hinge connection or a fixed connection for example now you have just one anchor holding the plate so your plate may rotate when you have a shear load so then it is assumed that you have to always use degree of restraint as one but for example you have another arrangement let's say four anchors so the connection between your plate and the concrete may be assumed as a fixed connection uh, degree of restraint maybe you can you can move it to two so you have a more rigid connection so it improves a lot on the bending moment capacity of the anchor is it uh, clear for everyone as of now still the audio is clear okay hopefully now let me go back let me make a standard plate so we can all connect to something which we have in our day-to-day -day life okay let's make a 200 by 200 100 plate with mm. Okay, now we have a 200 by 200 base plate with anchor spacing of let's say 100 by 100. Okay, this is a typical application what you would have. Now we've, we have finished base plate option. Now we move to the next step, which is anchor layout. Anchor layout lets you select how the anchors are arranged on your base plate so you have different arrangement of anchors you can have a single anchor exactly at the middle of the plate you can have two anchors you can have three anchors you can have six anchors you can have up to nine anchors that's the maximum which is predefined in the software also you see something here called customized Customize lets you customize any arrangement for the for by default all the arrangement what we saw are symmetrical arrangements But you can have you have an option called move point so you can position your anchors in any random location you would like uh, like to and Then you can directly move it or you can delete some anchors which you don't like or which is not applicable You can have an asymmetrical arrangement of anchors like you don't have at this corner no anchors but you have some anchors on the other side so this is possible also you have matrix arrangement wherein you can define number of rows and columns of anchors with spacing as i'm doing at the moment you would have a matrix arrangement also you have a circular arrangement where you have you can define the number of anchors for example i have six in a circle with a radius of 150 mm sorry 80 mm radius so you have the anchors arranged in a circular arrangement you can have eight anchors in circular arrangement automatically it adjusts accordingly you also have a next option which is a line arrangement where you have a uh, number of anchors, vertical or horizontal, you would love to. Uh, for example, let's say four anchors in a row with a spacing of 50 mm, you would have four anchors in a row. You can have either horizontal or vertical as you wish. Now, let me also show you something interesting. Suppose you have a very uh, different arrangement which you model in your software 
like you have already completed one half you can go on top and you have a mirror button so you can mirror whatever is on the left side to your right side so which is uh, saving almost half your uh, half of your time in modeling and as we saw in base plate software you also have a coordinate option you can enter the coordinates manually from your drawing softwares keeping the center of the plate as the origin so you have the coordinates manually you can choose your coordinates and then you would move the points accordingly so you can move anchors anywhere in any fashion you would love to that's it for anchor layout where you can define you also have anchor eccentricity as i said by default or the arrangement which we have selected is a very symmetrical arrangement let's go back to the four anchor arrangement with a smaller spacing for easy explanation 100 by 100 now the software is by default assuming that the anchor is symmetrically assigned in line with the center of the plate you also have an option of anchor eccentricity wherein you can move the anchors to any particular corners so you would move the anchors from a symmetrical arrangement to an eccentric arrangement and you double click on anchor eccentricity one more time it will return back to the original position 2d anchor editor is exactly the same as the customized option which we saw so you can see uh, the same option which we just modeled in the customized tool it's exactly the same no change it's just one additional button you have you have 2d slotted hole editor wherein you can make particular anchor holes in your base plate as slotted in any direction you can move the slots in x direction or y direction so you can have the slots there it it is a very useful tool if you need uh, need to release some shear of particular anchors because the slotted hole does not transfer the shear load to the anchors so some cases when the anchors are close to the edge it's especially beneficial to have slotted holes to prevent some edge failures the next option is annular gap filling by default you have a hole in your base plate the software is assuming that annular gap filling is automatic which means the software will fill the gap if it is required as per the loads which you input you can also have manually gap filled always on or you can you don't prefer to have the gap filled so you have annular gap filled always off depends on your priority if you see if you see annular gap filled always on you would see that there's an orange circle around the anchors which means you are using a non-shrink grout to fill the gap between your base plate and the anchor the cavity is filled with a non-shrink grout profile profile lets you define or tell the software what is your profile which is connected to your base plate is it an i-beam is it an h-beam is it a uh, a C section, a UPE section, a round tube, square tube, cold formed, hot formed, all possible options are available. Let's take an example of a round tube. Okay, now you obviously have most of the diameters and thickness predefined in the software, but if you have a customized uh, custom uh, dimension which is not they're predefined don't worry we have you covered you have a customized tool you can customize your diameter and thickness and we would calculate it for you you also have an option to have a rotation on your base plate obviously you would not notice anything because it's a round profile but let's say you are using an i-beam 
or an H beam. Let me make it a little smaller. Okay, very small beam. Now, if you want to rotate it, you can rotate the profile at an angle of 45 degrees. And also, by default, the software assumes that your profile is oriented exactly at the center of your plate. There is no eccentricity. But if you have eccentricity, don't worry. You have profile eccentricity, wherein you can add eccentricity in x or y direction. So you can move your profiles in any direction to your plate, and you can define. You can you can have multiple locations as per your site conditions. Now, loads design methods, the next step and the very important one. By default, the software assumes all calculations are done as per European Technical Authority guideline, uh, which is uh, the most prevailing or the most accepted uh, code for design of anchors around the globe. You also have another option called ENSO. ENSO is an in-house design method by Fisher based on FIB Bulletin 55. So this is additional option which we have wherein you have more flexibility and more uh, cases which you can define. Also, you are able to define using the software based on ACI 31811 and ACI 31814. So almost all anchor design codes are covered in the software. By default, the software assumes that you are talking to the software only in terms of design action, which means whatever loads you are telling the software are all factored. But if you want the software to calculate the safety factors and you work with service load, no problem. You can select characteristic actions and define your safety factors and the software automatically adds respective safety factors by default the safety factor is considered as per euro code which is 1.35 for dead load and for variable load 1.5 but if you're following american standards you can manually override and you can tell the software your respective safety factors and it will just follow your comments also let me put it back to design actions less complicated Static or quasi-static, by default, the software assumes that any load which you enter into the software is either static or quasi-static. Static is loads which is static, which is like dead loads or loads which does not change. And then you have quasi-static, which is relatively static, or maybe there's a very minute change happening over a long, long interval of time. So you don't, you hardly notice that is quasi static. Also, you can define, you can tell the software that you want to design a fire case. You want to see how anchors are safe when you have a fire. You can have what is the time limit you want the fire, the anchor to withstand fire. Let's say 120 minutes. Is it fire from one side or more than one side? You can define such things and it will let you calculate your fire case. Additionally, you have seismic where you have uh, you have uh, more options. You can define uh, or you can check the seismic nature of the anchors when you have a load. Is it safe in uh, seismic? You have uh, connection A, which is structural elements or connection B, which is non-structural. What is the seismic category? Is it C1 or C2 based on the area of application or project? You can also define seismic actions. If it is less than 20%, then you can tick this. And then the software calculates the effect of seismic. Also, you have the software is capable of calculating alternate or pulsating actions, which is mainly dynamic actions. So you have uh, special anchors. We have three anchors mainly, which are approved for dynamic loads. So you can 
select the effect of dynamic actions. So as you might know, dynamic action, actions are mainly related to fatigue. So you are requested to enter the number of cycles you want to be carried, what is the dead load applied, what is the percentage of dead load, and then you have to enter the uh, dynamic load which is there, let's say two kilonewton in both directions and it will calculate the effect of dynamic loads on the anchors. Let me go back to standard which is the uh, standard case and you also have the probability of entering loads for example you can enter it directly here at the interface let's say i have a tension of 20 kilonewton i have a moment of 2 kilonewton i have a shear of 3 kilonewton in various axes okay and let's see i have another message Okay, I have selected a wrong product, which is a dynamic anchor. Let me select a standard product. And then I have added some filters. Okay, I removed all the filters. I have kept everything standard. Okay, now I have an anchor arrangement. Let me go back to loads. I can enter, this is my number one case which I entered. I can add multiple loads. You have a different case of loading. You can enter the next load case at this tab and the software calculates the case as well. You can have multiple type of loads. For example, you can have a combination of static load and an alternate load or pulsating load or dynamic load you can have this flexibility you can also calculate under fire exposure for this case so what the software is doing is it is evaluating all the load cases and it is it is telling you what is the most critical case which you have Okay, now let's go back to direct design actions. I would remove the fire case and move forward. Yeah, multiple uh, design of anchors lets you calculate different anchors in the Fisher range, which is passing the load criteria which we had just entered. So now you maximize the screen, you would see all the anchors which is able to carry your load safely as per the Fisher range is concerned. So you'll see all the 15,000 articles which we have in our range has been cross-checked and it will tell you whichever is suitable for your case. You also have an additional tool here which is called anchor spacing when we move to load calculation and printout. This is the last place where uh, you would find the report also, we have some options here. I would quickly take you through. Anchor spacing. Once you click on this, now we have entered an arrangement, a base plate, which uh, we had in mind. Now, if you want the software to optimize your arrangement so that you may save a little of steel cost on the base plate dimensions, you click on anchor spacing. It will modify the arrangement and lets you calculate with the minimum dimension required for your loads Okay, now it is telling me that this is the best arrangement of anchors uh, in terms of spacing is concerned. Let's uh, make it less. I 
I have reduced the spacing to let's say 60 mm and then use anchor spacing one more time. So it'll, uh, now nothing has changed because this is the best uh, possible arrangement of anchors and the anchor was not passing the uh, loads. So first it's very important that we need to select an anchor which is passing the loads, which let me just define my concrete grade. I'm assuming I have C3037. C now I go back to load calculation now here I have anchor plate, so I click on anchor plate and it will let me calculate what is the minimum dimension or arrangement required to carry this load. Now it was a 200 by 200 base plate, the software automatically calculated that you don't require a 200 by 200 base plate, you can optimize it to 119 by 168.4 base plate which can safely carry the loads. So this is if in case you want the software to do this calculation for you. And then the next option is a finite element module. So you can define what is the grade of steel for your base plate. It can calculate the minimum thickness which you require using a finite element tool. And as you can see, the input was what I've entered is 12 mm, but the software is telling me, no, I need 13 mm to safely carry these loads. And then I can directly apply thickness. The calculation automatically considers a 13 mm plate, as you can see here. You have a few more details like address book or project data, which you can enter based on your uh, company details and project details. You have an option uh, here called preview. You can preview the report. And then you can include the finite element software and then show PDF. This is how the report looks like. It will show you all the details. For example, my details have been already entered. You can also have your project name details. Yeah, the chosen anchor which was selected. What is the uh, design data? What is the approval? Uh, available for this product, when was the approval last issued, what is the geometrical uh, dimensions we have entered, what is the code design method used for this calculation, uh, how uh, is the drilling method, installation method and so on and then you have the complete calculation. What is different in the Fisher software is it will show you calculation based on formulas and not just values so you it's very easy for you and your consultant to verify the uh, result because everything is transparent and black and white. You would see step by step how each factors or each result has been derived. And then in the end, you would see base plate calculation as well. And then last but not least, you would see the anchor part number. What is the tools you require to install this anchor correctly? What is the installation details which you require, such as drill hole type, drill hole depth, what is the diameter, what is your uh, torque wrench, uh, uh, socket size, what is the torque value which you need to uh, follow, which is here. Yeah, this is your torque value. Annular gap is not filled, so you don't have to fill the gap between your anchor and your base plate. And then the last option which you see is very useful for fabrication of holes in your base plate. You would see where the holes have been positioned and you would see even the coordinates where the holes are placed. So it's very easy for you to fabricate holes in your base plate. That's the uh, introduction about Fixperience. You also have a last feature I would like to explain is the CAD export tool. So CAD export tool lets you generate an AutoCAD drawing of the arrangement which we just modeled.
Okay, now uh, you can see the software automatically developed uh, drawing and you can select the view which you prefer to have in your files and then this is the 3D model and then you can generate a 2D with a button called show 2D preview and it will be automatically generated on the right side. You can select the drawing output file you, you prefer to have. Any drawing softwares are available as out, uh, output format, for example, AutoCAD 2004, and then click on export. It will be automatically downloaded to your downloads. OK, that's about the software. Now I would like to see the questions which you guys have been asking. OK. The first question is, can I design on holo blocks using Fixperience? Yes, of course. Now, coming back to the first step, substrate. This was asked by Mr. Osama Zain. Uh, Mr. Osama, you can go to substrate option, and you have an option called concrete and masonry. Do you want to save the file? You can say, OK, this I don't want to save this file. I selected no. And then you have options. Here you can see automatically the concrete has gone, and you have a masonry wall. Now you have an option here to select the kind of masonry which you have. And here you are. You have a hollow block. So now you are designing in a holo block wall. You can also tell the software what is the expected compressive strength of the block based on your site or the block supplier. What is he confirming? Is it greater than 10 Newton per square, greater than 6, and so on? Yes. And then the second question What is the difference between cracked and non cracked concrete? This was asked by Mr. Dominic and four other people. So uh, yes, very good question. Let me show you a small video, which would be self-explanatory. OK, now you see this is a building structure which is having a live load which is moving. So you can see when, you have, when the load is at this point, you have cracks developed. The black lines are showing cracks being developed in the structure itself. Now, whenever you have tension in concrete, that is when your cracks would develop or tend to develop in concrete. So this area is classified as crack concrete. So in simple language, whenever you have tension in concrete, that area is considered as cracked in structural terms. So if, for example, you have to install an anchor at this location where you have the black lines, could be here, could be on top, could be on this wall. So you have to use an anchor which is approved for crack concrete which is very important. OK, the next question was asked by uh, Mr. Osama again. And he was asking if you can import the reinforcement layout from a detection tool after scanning the concrete slab. Uh, very good option. Uh, I would love to have. But at this point, I I'm afraid that we don't have this option in the software. It is a very advanced uh, option, which definitely is very useful. But at this moment, we, we don't have this option in the software. Sorry, Mr. Osama. The next question was asked by Mr. Ahmad Karma. In concrete options, you merge both of cases, no reinforcement, normal reinforcement in one case. Is the same defined and same 
factors as per code if I have normal reinforcement or do I have? Okay, now going back to this option, let me go back to concrete. No, I don't want to save this file because I already answered Mr. Osama. Now, here you have normal weight concrete with normal no or standard reinforcement the concrete is there's only option to select normal weight concrete at this point there is no other concrete available so it's a standard concrete now you have an option here for no or standard reinforcement you can select dense reinforcement this might affect in some particular cases depends on which failure is happening for example uh, let me uh, put a random load in the design for example, then I go to my results. I can see there is steel failure, pullout failure, concrete cone failure, and so on. These are the main three failures which is happening in tension. So here I can see concrete cone failure is governing. So in some cases, based on the di dimensions and other factors, the dense reinforcement might improve in the design, but not always. And then you can have, this is purely for your edge. If you have an edge distance, so here I have an edge of 150 mm. And if I have a shear load in this direction, let's say I have 10 kN shear load, I have a failure which is which is a concrete edge failure. So now I am changing the edge parameters and now I have a safe result. Now one thing I, I might have missed to explain you, I'm sorry for that, is you, you have the possibility of knowing what is your failure modes. For example, I have a 5 kN tension and a, 20, a 10 kN shear. You can see on the left most bottom corner that you have an indicator there. The first one is the resistance in tension. The second one is the resistance and shear. So here I am only utilizing 29% of the anchor capacity and I'm utilizing around 89% of the shear capacity and the overall capacity is utilized at 99.3. Now, if I want to know which is the worst failure happening in the 89.7 percentage, I can still go to results and I can see steel is at 6.6%, pull out is at 14.4, concrete cone is at 29.4. 41 that's for tension and for shear you have steel at 14.6 pry out at 22.6 and concrete at 89% so i hope i explained this case uh, clearly for you mr ahmed okay now the next question is is it possible to have recorded video of this webinar or youtube link for example yes definitely this was asked by mr mohammed fuad yes mr mohammed fuad we uh, would be able to send you the link and you would have a full recorded video of the webinar the next question came from mr apur nikam how to check plate thickness is safe for particular fisher bolt Yes, uh, this is what we explained in the finite element software. So you can go again to the finite element tool. You can, for example, the current uh, base plate selected is 8 mm. You can check if this plate is sufficient by selecting chosen plate thickness and it will tell you it is sufficient because you are utilizing only 20% of your steel. So you can apply this thickness straight away so you if you have to check your base plate uh, thickness you have to go to the finite element tool and you have to run, run the finite element module and it is done the next question is by, by uh, Dominique and uh, three other people what situation in the base plate warrant use of grout grout is normally uh, grout is normally uh, given when you have uh, at site an uneven surface, this is purely based on your site condition. When you don't have a clear level in between your concrete or your concrete is not 100% flat, 
it's a roughened surface so your base plate normally would not be resting horizontal completely so then we have the option here of adding a grout and the grout levels the case and your base plate is properly aligned this is one option the second option is a typical application which i always love to say is for the lamp post application for example you would have to fix a lamp post and then you have to have a level difference like this as you can see for aligning later on all the posts in one level so you can have this option as well so it's basically for adjusting the level that you have uh, uh, standoff option in the calculation again the same uh, concern which was asked by uh, mr uh, uh, Muhammad Fuad came from Mr. Kalib. Uh, yes, you can also have a download or a link later on for the presentation and the webinar, and we would send it to you, of course. Okay, the next question came from Amit Parik. What is the solution in case of an inadequate edge distance? Very good question. Let me go to this particular case. So now I have an edge distance of 80 mm. By default, I don't. I uh, I'm assuming that there is no edge reinforcement uh, because I don't know. So now the software is telling me there is an error here. My anchor is not safe. It is at a utilization of 100.9, so it has to be always less than 100 percent. One option is first I'll try if my anchor size making it bigger size would help that's 99.5 percent so it is less than 100 percent so a 12 mm anchor would would safely arrest the load considering the same edge distance which we have second option is you can check with the side condition do you have is it a structural member if it is a structural member then for sure you have edge reinforcements or stirrups so you can select this option so immediately you would see a difference here, 76.9%, which again solves your issue. There are other uh, options also possible. For example, I go back to case one. Another trick what you can apply is you can add slotted holes. You can have slotted holes. And uh, what I did here was I just added slotted holes at the anchor next to the edge. And now these two anchors are released of any shear load. And these two anchors are taking the edge uh, shear load completely. So you have more edge for these anchors. And then it solves the case by a huge margin. The next application is what about submerged anchors? Yes, we have certain anchors or you have uh, tool here you have water saturated hole or standing water in a hole so these are filters which which is related to uh, water conditions so you would see you would see only the anchors which are approved for these particular cases you would not see the whole uh, assortment of fissure so then this might help you in selecting the submerged cases we have anchors which are approved and we are using it in uh, submerged cases and please you can contact us and we can give you expert opinion and we have uh, we can advise you on the method of statement is it possible to model l shaped base plate this is by miss adira uh, miss adira unfortunately the software still works on a 3d platform as i understand your case correctly do you want an l shaped plate or you have uh you have a corner case which means your anchor uh, your plate is resting on two faces of the slab is this what you want if it is just the l-shaped plate yes you can uh, design the l-shaped plate here uh, on the tool so you just need to uh, play uh, play with the uh, arrangement
so you can you can define and you can uh, you can select an l shaped plate like this if this is what you what you want if not uh, if you are if i understand your case you are looking for a corner case you have two faces of the slab and you want anchors to be installed on two faces then the software uh, still is not uh, capable of this case but you would uh, still uh, we can we can give you some engineering judgment based on our experience in this case and uh, this has to be one on one uh, there's a request by mr amgar that uh, they would require the final link on email for the software definitely we would uh, do that and does the software consider calculation of anchor reinforcement required to prevent complete failure for shear tension uh, as per ACI 318? Okay, now let us assume that we have ACI 318 part 14. Okay, here also, as you can see, there is normal weight, lightweight, and uh, light. Uh, sorry, lightweight concrete. You have uh, shear conditions. You also have edge conditions. You also have filters here. No concrete breakout in tension. No concrete breakout in shear. These are additional factors which you have to define to the software, and then the software will calculate the cases accordingly. Uh, one thing you have to uh, observe is while you select ACI, the concrete grade also has to be selected based on ACI standards. This is very important. Okay. Now the next question. Okay. Now uh, I think we are almost at the end of the session, and we uh, the chat room would uh, close soon. There's a request by Mr. Sakriya Saki that we he would like to have another uh, session on Reba Fix for sure. We would uh, coordinate this, and we would definitely. Uh, go through all your questions and we would uh, answer it to you uh, later on by email. I would once again like to share the uh, link for the software with us here. Okay. And then uh, I can also show you once you go to the link, this is the screen you would have and then just click on download option download offline installation this is the uh, preferred one if you're using a single pc version just download this and then again once you have downloaded you have this screen go through uh, go to the registration button enter all your credential which is marked star you would receive an email and then come back press the key i can copy paste the activation key which which was sent to you in few seconds in your into your email and then the software is activated free for life thank you very much for joining us uh, on behalf of fisher middle east